topic. As a reminder, as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded, as you can hear. Uh, we will have time for questions at the end. Questions should go in the Q&A question and answer box in Zoom. Today, we will be discussing an overview of pre-K slash preschool meal requirements, the school breakfast meal pattern, the lunch meal pattern, and we will have time at the end for questions. And although this webinar refers to pre-K content, uh, requirements apply to preschool students enrolled in school as well. As you'll see, the age group um, span for pre-K, preschool is pretty wide. So you might have preschool in addition to pre-K in your schools, and um, this information would apply. Nutritional requirements are different for younger age groups and older ones. The meal pattern requirements reflect this need. The pre-K preschool meal pattern is designed to meet the nutritional needs of children aged one through five, has two age groups, ages one to two and ages three to five, and demonstrate that milk type and portions are different for each of these age groups. As a reminder, meal pattern requirements must be followed if students are not commingled with other grades. Speaking of commingled service, let's talk about it. So commingling occurs when preschool students and students from older age groups, such as kindergarten through fifth grade, kindergarten through eighth grade, or kindergarten through 12th grade, are served meals in the same place at the same time. It's hard to tell if preschool students, um, it's hard to tell preschool students from older students and or if it would be operationally difficult to serve different foods or different amounts of foods during the combined meal service. So these are three main points to consider um, when you are trying to determine if you are able to do commingled service. Again, pre-K students and students from older grades are served meals in the same place during the same service time. It is difficult to tell preschool students from older students, and it would be operationally difficult to serve different foods or different amounts of foods during the combined meal service. If co-mingled service occurs, schools may offer the meal pattern of the older grades to pre-K students. However, if co-mingling does not occur, pre-K slash preschool meal pattern requirements must be followed. And here they are. Here is the breakfast meal pattern for preschool aged children. As you can see, there are some differences in portion requirements for ages one to two versus ages three to five. I'm gonna go over them now. So for the milk component, ages one to two receive half cup or four ounce serving, and ages three to five receive a three quarter cup or a six ounce serving. For the fruit vegetable component, Ages one to two years receive a quarter cup serving and ages three to five receive a half cup serving. For the grain component, ages one to two and three to five both receive half ounce equivalent. And with the meat meat alternate component, it's optional. They may be served in place of the entire grains component up to three times per week at breakfast. The minimum serving size for both age groups is half ounce equivalent. And as a reminder um, throughout this presentation for these pre-K pre preschool meal patterns, um, the portions that you see are minimums. You may serve larger portions. In addition to serving sizes, there are differences between the meal pattern requirements for pre-K preschool and K-5 at breakfast. As a reminder, if you are serving older grades, for instance, grades six through eight, you will need to follow the older grade meal pattern if co-mingling occurs. For today's webinar and for today's purposes, we are comparing meal patterns between pre-K, preschool, and K-5. Let's review them in greater detail now. Here are the differences for the milk component. For preschool, as I mentioned, the minimum serving size for ages one to two is half cup or four fluid ounces required daily for breakfast. For ages three to five, it's three quarter cup or six, ounce, six ounces required daily. And the milk type also differs from grades K through five and that for ages one to two, unflavored whole milk only may be provided. And then for three to five year olds, unflavored low fat 1% or fat free skim milk only can be provided. You'll note here there are not different options of fluid milk as there are with K-5. There is an asterisk here um, and a note is that for the um, age grouping of three through five, unflavored whole milk 
and unflavored reduced fat milk, which is 2%, may be served to children between the ages of 24 and 25 months to help with the transition from whole milk to fat-free skim or low-fat milk. In comparison, for the grades K through 5 meal pattern at breakfast, you want to, um, you need to ensure that one cup or eight ounces of milk is required daily, and this is five cups over the course of the, the week, and the types that can be provided are unflavored or flavored low-fat 1% or fat-free skim milk. You must offer at least two different options of fluid milk, for instance, low-fat and fat-free milk, and if you are offering flavored milk, you must also offer unflavored milk. Here are the differences for the fruits and vegetables component. For preschool, the minimum serving size for one to two years year olds are one quarter cups of fruits, vegetables, or a combination of both required daily for breakfast. For three to five years old, half cup of fruits, vegetables, or a combination of both required. You may serve fruits, vegetables, or combination of both to meet the combined vegetables fruit component. There are no vegetable subgroup requirements and you may serve 100% juice once per day. If juice is served at breakfast, it cannot be served at lunch. In comparison, let's review the K-5 fruit vegetable requirements for breakfast. For fruits, the minimum serving size is one cup of fruit required daily, five cups over the course of the week. Only fruits are required at breakfast. However, ve vegetables may replace fruits and we'll go through this below. 100% juice can be offered to meet up to half the amount of fruit or vegetable offerings in a week with no daily limit. In terms of vegetables, they're optional at breakfast. However, they may be offered in place of fruit. Starchy vegetables can be served at any time during the week, provided at least two cups of vegetables from the following subgroups are offered during the same week, dark green, red orange, beans and peas, legumes or other. 100% juice can be offered to meet up to half the amount of fruit or vegetable offerings in a week with no daily limit. Here are the differences for the grain component. Uh, we will review grain-based desserts in more detail later in this presentation. So for preschool at breakfast, the grain requirements are for minimum serving sizes. For both ages one to two and three to five year olds, it's a half ounce equivalent required daily. One of the grain components offered during the day must be whole grain rich. And enriched grains may be served at breakfast if whole grain rich items are served at lunch. Whereas in grades K-5, the minimum serving size is one ounce equivalent required daily, which is seven to 10 ounces um, equivalent required weekly. As a reminder with K-5, there are daily and weekly requirements. And at least 80% of the grains offered each week must be whole grain rich. For grain-based desserts for preschool, they may not credit towards the grain component However, sweet crackers like graham crackers and animal crackers are allowable and count towards the grain component. In terms of K-5, you can serve grain-based desserts donated, uh, <laughs> denoted by subscript four or five in the Exhibit A grain chart for child nutrition programs, and we'll go through this, at breakfast for some or all days in a week. Examples of allowable grain-based desserts at breakfast include sweet crackers, donuts, cereal bars, sweet rolls, and toaster pastries. However, items listed in grain um, in the exhibit chart, exhibit A, with superscript three, such as cookies, cake, dessert pies, and cobblers, do not contribute toward the grain requirements at breakfast. And as a reminder, the average daily calories for a five-day school week must meet minimum and maximum values. Here's that handy dandy grain chart that I kept referencing. Um, again, we're going to kind of go over grain-based desserts in more detail later in this presentation, but I just wanted to put this screenshot up here. Hopefully it looks like a familiar resource to everybody. Um, the blue and the red writing um, have to do with uh, what's allowable and unallowable with CACFP and NSLP for meal types. The last breakfast component we will review are the meat meat alternates. Here are the differences between preschool and grades K through five. For preschool, the minimum serving size, which is optional at breakfast, for one to two and three to five year olds is you can serve half ounce equivalent in place of grains up to three times per week. When substituting the meat meat alternate at breakfast, it must be substituted for the entire grains component, and it may not count 
It's a combination of grains and meat alternates towards the grains component. Unlike grades K through five, where again, the meat meat alternate is optional at breakfast, but you can substitute one ounce equivalent meat meat alternates for one ounce equivalent grains after the one ounce equivalent minimum grain requirement is offered, which is permitted daily. Grains and meat meat alternates can be combined and count towards the grain component in a reimbursable breakfast. All right, we're moving on to lunch. Like breakfast, there are differences in portion requirements for ages one to two versus ages three to five at lunch. For the milk component, ages one to two receive half cup or four ounce serving, and ages three to five receive a three quarter cup or a six ounce serving. For the fruit component, ages one to two receive a one eighth cup serving, and ages three to five receive a one quarter cup serving. For the vegetable component, Ages one to two receive a one eighth cup serving and ages three to five receive a quarter cup serving. As an option, a second different vegetable may be served in place of fruit at lunch. For the grain component, ages one to two and three to five both receive half ounce equivalent. For the meat meat alternate component, ages one to two years receive a one ounce equivalent serving and ages three to five receive a 1.5 ounce equivalent serving. There are additional differences between the meal pattern requirements for pre-K, preschool, and K-5 at lunch. As a reminder, if you are serving older grades, for instance, grades six through eight, as we talked about earlier, you will need to follow the older grade meal pattern if co-mingling occurs. Again, for today's webinar, we're comparing meal patterns for pre-K, preschool, and K-5. Let's review these differences now. Here are the differences for the milk component. For preschool at lunch, the minimum serving size for one to two year olds is half cup or four ounces required daily. For three to five year olds, it's three quarter cup or six, six ounces required daily. In terms of the types of milk allowed at lunch, for one year olds, it has to be unflavored whole milk only. And for two to five year olds, unflavored low fat 1% or fat free skim milk only. And you're not required to offer different options of fluid milk. And there is that flexi flexibility um, to offer unflavored whole milk and unflavored reduced fat milk to children eight between the ages of 24 and 25 months to help with the transition um, to fat-free or low-fat milk. In terms of grades K through five, the minimum serving size is one cup or eight ounces required daily, five cups required weekly, and the types offered must be unflavored or flavored low-fat 1% or fat-free skim milk. You must offer at least two different options of fluid milk, for instance, low-fat and fat-free milk. And if offering flavored milk, you must also offer unflavored milk. Here are the differences for the fruits and vegetables component. Let's review preschool first. So for fruits, the minimum serving size for one to two-year-olds is one-eighth cup required every day. For three to five year olds, one quarter cup required daily. And a second diff different vegetable may be served in place of fruit. And you may serve 100% juice once per day. If juice is served at breakfast, it cannot be served at lunch. In comparison for grades K-5, the minimum fruit serving size is a half cup required daily or two and a half cups over the course of the week. A second vegetable cannot be served in place of fruit and 100% juice can be offered to meet up to half the amount of fruit or vegetable offerings in a week with no daily limit. For preschool vegetables, the minimum serving size are one eighth cup every day for one to two year olds, one quarter cup daily for three to five year olds. There are no vegetable subgroup requirements. A second different vegetable may be served in place of fruit and you may serve 100% juice once per day. If juice is served at breakfast, it cannot be served at lunch. In comparison for grades K through five for vegetables, the minimum serving size is three quarter cup required daily, which is three and three quarter cups required weekly. There are weekly vegetable subgroup requirements. Dark green vegetables, half cup, red orange, three quarter cup, beans and peas, half cup, starchy vegetables, half cup, and other half cup. 100% juice can be offered to meet up to half the amount of fruit or vegetable offerings in a week with no daily limit. Here are the differences for the grain components at lunch. 
for preschool, the minimum serving size for both one to two and three to five year old groupings are half an ounce equivalent required daily. One of the grain components must be whole grain rich every day. Enriched grains may be served at breakfast if whole grain rich items are served at lunch. Whereas with grades K-5, the minimum serving size is one ounce equivalent every day um, or eight to nine ounces over the course of the week. Remember, there are different daily and weekly requirements. And at least 80% of the grains offered each week must be whole grain rich. In terms of grain-based desserts for preschool, they may not credit towards the grain component. However, sweet crackers like graham crackers and animal crackers are allowable and count towards the grains component with no weekly limit. For grades K through five, you may credit up to two ounce equivalent of grain-based desserts denoted by superscript three, four, and five in the exhibit A grain chart for child nutrition programs, which we'll take a look at towards the grain component each week. Sweet crackers count toward the weekly limit for crediting no more than two ounce equivalents of grain-based desserts towards the grain component each week. And as a reminder, this is for lunch. It's a different requirement for breakfast. All right, so it's really important that you use the Exhibit A grain cart chart as a reference for menu planning. As seen here um, in really tiny print, so I apologize for that, but this is on our website. Um, the red items and the blue items on the Exhibit A grain chart include footnotes with more details about grain allowances. And what you see here is um, what we reviewed in the previous slide. There is also this handy dandy handout um, that I am posting in the resources at the end of this presentation. It's a nice comparison between what are considered grain-based desserts and what are not. Um, I recommend using this as a companion to the Exhibit A grain chart. Let's review some now. So what is considered grain-based desserts? Brownies, cakes, including coffee cake and cupcakes, cereal bars, breakfast bars, and granola bars, cookies, including vanilla wafers, donuts of any kind, fig rolls, bars, cookies, and other fruit-filled rolls, bars, and cookies, gingerbread, uh, ice cream cones, marshmallow cereal treats, pie crusts, um, of dessert pies, cobblers, and fruit turnovers, sweet bread puddings, biscotti, sweet biscotti, sweet croissants, pita chips, rice pudding, sweet scones, sweet rolls, toaster pastries. Um, the, the other side list is uh, items that are not considered grain-based desserts, and these include banana bread, zucchini bread, and other quick breads, cereals that meet the sugar limit and are whole grain rich, enriched or are fortified, cornbread, all types of crackers, French toast, muffins, pancakes, pie crusts of savory pies, such as vegetable pot pie, chicken pot pie, or quiche, plain croissants, plain or savory pita chips, savory biscotti, such as those made with cheese, vegetables, or herbs, savory bread puddings, such as those made with cheese, vegetables, or herbs, savory rice puddings, such as those made with cheese, vegetables, or herbs. Are you getting recipe ideas from, from this presentation? Um, I hope so, because my mind is rolling. Um, savory scones, such as those made from cheese, vegetables, and herbs, teething biscuits, crackers, and toasts, um, tortillas, and tortilla chips, and waffles. All right, let's review the differences for pre-K, preschool, and grades K through five in the meats, meat alternates component. And again, this is for lunch. So for preschool, the minimum serving size for one to two year olds are one ounce equivalent required daily. For three to five year olds, it's 1.5 ounce equivalent required daily. And for grades K through five, it's a one ounce re equivalent required daily and eight to 10 ounce equivalents must be offered over the course of the week. There are additional considerations with pre-K preschool meal pattern requirements. For preschool, there are sugar limits. So cereals must have six grams or less per dried ounce of sugar, per dry ounce of sugar. Six grams of sugar or less per dry ounce of cereal, pardon me. And for yogurt, the uh, sugar limit is 23 grams or less per six ounces of yogurt. There is no deep fat frying allowed on site, including in central kitchens. And for sodium, there's no sodium limits with the preschool meal pattern.
For K5, there are no sugar limits on specific foods, but the average daily calories for a five-day school week must meet minimum and maximum values. There are also weekly limits on calories from saturated fats, no trans fats allowed, and weekly sodium limits. Service style also differs, differs between the two meal patterns. For preschool, when we uh, think about offer versus serve, it's only allowed when preschool students are co-mingled with older students. Students must select at least three food items and one item must be at least a half cup of fruits and or vegetables. For grades K through five, it's allowed and students must select at least three, com three food components. One component must be at least a half cup of fruits or vegetables. For family style meal service with preschool, Students must select at least a quarter cup of vegetables, fruit, or both if offered the preschool meal pattern. If students are commingled and being offered the K-5 meal pattern, each student must select at least a half cup of vegetables, fruits, or both. Minimum serving size of each item or component must be offered to each student over the course of the meal. In terms of grades K-5 for, for family style meal service, Students must select at least a half cup of vegetables, fruits, or both, and minimum serving size of each item or component must be offered to each student over the course of the meal. The following slides are links to helpful resources that we were used throughout this presentation. This first one um, is a resource that I shared earlier, comparing grain-based desserts to non-grain-based desserts. This is for the Child and Adult Care Food Program, um, but it is really helpful um, when you're comparing what is a grain-based dessert and what is not a grain-based dessert um, as the preschool pre-K meal pattern um, takes into account CACFP. And this resource, Serving School Meals to Preschoolers, was the one heavily used throughout this presentation. It's a great resource, the link is here. Um, it breaks down um, the clear differences between the preschool meal, meal pattern requirements and the K-5 meal pattern requirements and has additional helpful tips throughout. And finally, it's our favorite, the Exhibit A grain chart requirements. And as I mentioned, um, you can see that there are blue and red um, text throughout this, um, and they have asterisks. And the slides and the, the handout that was shared in the slide before this um, reference what is and what is not allowed with grain-based desserts um, for the K-5 meal pattern um, and what is and is not allowed for grains um, with the preschool meal pattern. And I really recommend pulling up this exhibit A, reading um, the superscripts, which are the little numbers that appear um, with the colored text. And then the footnotes will be at the bottom of the handout um, to kind of understand what those, um, the colored uh, text mean. All right, as promised, um, we do have time for questions. So I wanted to open it up um, as we covered a lot of content and see what questions you have. At the moment, we have one. Great. The minimum serving size is one cup of fruit at breakfast, but does the student have to take the entire serving or can they only take half a cup if they don't want it all? So I am interpreting this question as being for the K-5 meal pattern and a minimum of one cup must be offered for the K-5 meal pattern. But if the student selects half a cup, that would count towards the reimbursable meal for offer versus serve. And we're gonna wait um, another minute to see if we have any other questions. I guess I was really thorough. <laughs> All right. Well, we don't have any other questions coming in. I oh. hope. Oh, wait. Here why we go. Is there no, why is there no sodium limit for pre-K? So the... Um, 
preschool pre-K meal pattern is based on, um, I believe, CACFP meal pattern. So I believe that is within those guidelines. It's not based on the national school lunch. And if offer first to serve is not allowed with pre-K serving, and you have to offer all components, what do they have to take? So um, I pulled back the slide for offer versus serve with preschool versus grades K-5. And offer versus serve is allowed if they're commingled, so um, having the same service. If they're not commingled, um, you would do um, ser serve, so they would have all of the components if they are not commingled, um, and if they're not doing family-style meal service. It would be serve rather than offer versus serve. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining me today for the pre-K meal pattern webinar. I hope everybody has a great day. And as always, reach out to our office with any further questions. Take care.